too good. Um, our study was the effect of climate change on persons with a grade of C3 in chemicals. <coughs> First off, um, in our acknowledgments, we'd like to thank uh, Professor Nichol for helping us uh, develop a research question and experimental design and helping us analyze the data. I'd like to thank Dr. Schaefer for helping us collect and analyze the data. I'd like to thank Dr. Ron Lee for providing us with the pineapple plants to use in our experiment. And finally, we'd like to thank the Williamsville College Biology Department for allowing us to use the a lab space and allowing us to use the light board. Global warming is a gradual inc increase in worldwide temperatures, largely due to increased levels of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases. The greenhouse effect occurs whenever greenhouse gases trap the sun's energy in the atmosphere, which leads to Deforestation and the burning of fossil fuels are major contributors to the increased levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by releasing stored carbon dioxide. Photosynthesis is the conversion of light energy into chemical energy. Plants take in water, carbon dioxide, and light energy and produce glucose and oxygen. Oxygen is exchanged for carbon dioxide through pores in the back of the leaf known as stomach. Water also diffuses out of these pores whenever the stomata are open. This is called transpiration, which is the limiting factor of photosynthesis. In our study, we looked at two different types of photosynthetic pathways, C3 plants and CAM plants. C3 plants use your visco for carbon capture and fixation, and both steps occur in muscle cells. Rubisco, rubisco is just as likely to react with oxygen as it is to react with carbon dioxide. And when this happens, there's known as photorespiration, and it is a limiting factor of photosynthesis. C3 plants do better in cooler climates. Camp plants use pet provoxylase for carbon capture, so they don't have the problem of photorespiration like C3 plants do. They use rubisco, like C3 plants, camp plants use rubisco for carbon fixation. And, but unlike the C3 plants, they separate their carbon capture and carbon fixation, capturing carbon at night and fixing it during the day. The reason for our study was to see how climate change would affect the plants we use for food, specifically the uh, pure beta pepo plant, which is the zucchini plant, and ananas kenosis, which is the pineapple plant. So for the zucchini plant, we hypothesized that when the CO2 concentrations increased at the lower temperature, the photosynthetic rate would also increase. However, we hypothesized that when the CO2 concentrations increase at higher temperatures, the photosynthetic rate would still increase, but it would be less than the low temperature. For the pineapple plant, we hypothesized that um, when the CO2 concentrations increase, the photosynthetic rate would also increase, and we also hypothesized that temperature would not affect um, the photosynthetic rate. So in our study, we grew zucchini plants um, from seeds, and we received the pineapple plants from Dr. Ron Lee. We grew and stored the plants in the greenhouse at uh, Williamsville College. We used the Lycor Li6400 um, XT machine to measure the photosynthetic rate of these plants. In addition to the Lycor allowing us to uh, measure the photosynthetic rate of these plants, um, it also allows us to regulate the temperature and um, CO2 concentrations the plant is receiving. And also, while the um, plants were being tested or were being measured for photosynthesis, uh, the plant was being exposed to light by the Lycor. <coughs> we pre-programmed the LICOR to test that 11 different carbon dioxide concentrations, 400, 300, 200, 100, 50, 400, 400, 600, 800, 1,000, and 1,200, and at two different temperatures, 24 degrees Celsius for the current summer average temperature and 28 degrees Celsius, the predicted summer average. We, we collected data on the two different, okay, we measured the photosynthetic rate of all 11 concentrations before switching the temperatures and then we 
we alternated which temperature was used first to prevent any skew, in the, data, the data being skewed by an effect of the, one, the first temperature would have on the second temperature. Three plants, and then we tested three plants for some reason. We programmed the light board to create ACI curves out of the data that was collected. An ACI curve shows the effect of carbon dioxide concentrations on photosynthetic rate. We measured A max, which is photosynthetic maximum, and that was the greatest point, the greatest data point of, of the photosynthetic rate. We also measured slope, which was the increase, the increase of photosynthetic rate. For zucchini, we measured it, we, we gathered our slope from zero to six hundred, and for parts per million carbon dioxide in So um, the ATI curves that were given to us by the uh, by the light core show us the leveling offset for photosynthesis, which for the zucchini plant was 600 parts per million of carbon dioxide, and for the pineapple plant was um, 800 parts per million of carbon dioxide. The ACI curves also show us the Amax or the maximum rate of photosynthesis for uh, the plants, and also the slope or the rate of increase of photosynthesis. So when measuring the AMAX, there was a significant difference between um, the species, which is supported by our p-value being less than 0.001. Also, um, the temperature had no effect on the AMAX, which was supported by the p-value being 0 0.552. Um, when measuring the rate of increase in photosynthesis between uh, the two plants, uh, there was a significant difference, which is supported by the p-value being less than 0.001. Um, and then again, temperature had no effect on the rate of increase in photosynthesis within each species, which is supported by the p-value being less than 0 0.001. Our first hypothesis was not supported because there was no significant difference between the rate of photosynthesis at higher and lower temperatures for zucchini plants. Our second hypothesis, however, was supported because we did predict that there would be no difference, significant difference between the rate of photosynthesis and our third hypothesis that the photosynthetic rate would level off at, at a certain CO2 concentration was supported for both species. Higher carbon dioxide concentrations resulted in an increase in photosynthetic rate due to an increase in the amount of photo or in the amount of carbon dioxide available. We came up with three reasons why temperature did not temperature, why temperature may not have affected the photosynthetic rate. Our first explanation was that the higher temperature was not different enough from the lower temperature to change the photosynthetic rate. Our second explanation was that the higher temperature was not high enough to have a dramatic effect on transpiration and the closing of stomata. And our third explanation was that the, the plants were not grown in, in these different temperatures, so they so they might not have actually been affected by them as much as they could have been. So one way to further the study would be for us to do the study again, but instead we would actually grow the plants in um, the in, like the elevated um, carbon dioxide levels and temperatures that we had tested at. We also came up with two possible explanations for why camp photosynthesis was so low. The first explanation is that since camp plants take in carbon dioxide at night, they and we used we had light on the leaves during the test that they may not have been exchanging gases and bringing in carbon dioxide. A sec our second explanation is that since they do separate their carbon capture and fixation, they may have just been slower overall and.
So um, to conclude, overall, the photosynthetic rate of the can plants was much lower than the photosynthetic rate of the zucchini plants. Um, also, for both plants, the um, increase of CO2 concentrations increased the photosynthetic rate of both plants, and temperature didn't affect this rate of increase. Um, if future climate change models hold true, um, according to our study, um, climate change should have a positive effect on photosynthesis because if we found that the CO2 concentrations increased the photosynthetic rate, which as climate change models predict, the CO2 increase in the atmosphere also will increase. Here's our literature cited. Are there any questions? Specifically, did you use zucchini and pineapple? Well, we were going to use zucchini and cucumber, but the cucumber plants didn't grow large enough for us to test photosynthetic rate, and the pineapple was just what was available. Okay. But we specifically tested food like agricultural plants to assess the effects of climate change on our feed source. So with the increase in photosynthesis, that should um, increase the um, plant's overall production. So um, I would imagine that the for food, it would also it would have a positive effect. So there would be more uh, food sources available. Okay. Um, do we eat the leaves of zucchini? Maybe one way to continue this research. Uh, I'm not saying wrong, but, but like I just said, I'm just leading down another line of questioning. Go ahead. Sorry. Would be to see, like, to, whenever we act, like, to actually grow the plants in the conditions to see how that affects, like, their fruit production. Good answer. <laughs> Your first answer was totally fine. I'm just giving you the fact that only because um, I recently was reading something about um, tobacco plants and people have like, they're trying to um, increase photosynthetic rate of plants and they've done it in tobacco by doing some genetic changes. But people, I mean, but we eat or we use tobacco leaves, but most things we don't actually use the leaves of. So like, increased leaf production does not necessarily mean Did you think that pineapple would be the same uh, regardless of the temperature, but zucchini would be different? Because pineapple, or can plants in general, um, they are they live in a hotter, drier climate. So we just figured that the hot, the higher temperature would change the photosynthetic rate. But because they're used to those climates, but then the zucchini plant normally lives in a cooler environment. So with the increase of temperature, we hypothesized that that would decrease the photosynthetic rate. Okay. Now a lot of you guys don't normally talk in class, but some, one of you has to speak up. by um, growing the plants under the environments, under 
under the conditions that we tested at, we would want to do the pineapple and the zucchini plant again so that we can compare the results from both of the studies. Are, uh, are there a lot of crop plants that are canned? Related to what she asked, um, why would growing the, or what difference, what difference would growing the plants at elevated temperatures and sort of now temperatures, um, what effect would that show? Like, how would that be any different than what you did with the Lycor? So, with the Lycor, whenever we were measuring. The measurements only lasted about 20 minutes. So the plant leaf was only like under these conditions for around 20 minutes. So if we um, actually measure or actually grow the plants in the conditions that we tested at, this could allow like other effects like um, water availability and um, to affect the photosynthetic breakdown of the plants. Okay. So why would water availability be affected? Because as at increased temperatures there's gonna be less water um, in the soil, typically. So there'd be less water available to the plant, which could affect um, if it wants to open its stomata to let carbon dioxide in, or if like the, or if there would be a larger consequence of opening its stomata and losing water due to the higher temperatures. introduction you talked about the greenhouse effects and said that greenhouse gases are um, lead to increased temperatures what are some greenhouse gases methane <coughs> carbon dioxide water vapor nitrous oxide ozone okay and what are the current levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere 400 parts per million okay and what was um was there a particular temperature where Pmax, I can't remember where you measured Amax, how you decided, was that at a specific point or um, like at a specific concentration of carbon dioxide or was did it vary between your different samples? I think it was just like the highest, like the highest point of photosynthesis. So whenever the, yeah, where, whenever the highest point of photosynthesis started to level level off was when we started was when we like measure the the maximum like rate of photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. Was that fairly consistent within species? Um, we like we said in the presentation um, for the zucchini plant um, that happened at six hundred um, carbon uh, carbon dioxide concentrations like parts per million, and then for pineapple plants was eight hundred parts per million. Part of the reason these results happen is because pineapples and zucchinis are located in geographically different areas. Like, 
Are you asking if the reason that the photosynthetic rates, the rate was so low for pineapple and like, well, I'm saying like, like, like pineapples may adjust to warmer temperatures and drier areas because they live in different areas or vice versa? Could it just be because they're used to different environments and native to different areas? I suppose so. No, I, I don't really yeah. know. That would be 